Kath, I think it's kind of ironic that here we are in the 21st century, first third of the 21st century, and perhaps the biggest proponent of verifiable facts and truth is the Christian church. Because what's happening in our culture, I just read a book by James Davis on Hunter, a friend of mine, did indeed. Uh, who was saying increasingly the culture doesn't believe in facts or truth. It believes that people create their own truth, they create their own facts. Uh, there's no real certainty about what the right, the right take on reality is. And so here we have the, the Christian church of all things being the, the center of the uh, of emphasis on there are historical facts that can be verified. Yeah. It's not just ironic. It's actually pretty frustrating. I remember uh, a number of years ago, I wrote an article for the Redeemer newsletter when we still had a Redeemer newsletter um, called Trust But Verify, which mm -hmm. was a slogan that was uh, being used at the time by the superpowers that were working on nuclear disarmament, which right. meant, That's yeah, right. we trust you to get rid of your nukes, but we also want right. to take a look and verify right. it. So, right. um, And the, the point of uh, calling the article that was that God worked it out so that we didn't have to take the resurrection just on trust. He actually made it verifiable. Now, I remember that article, despite my advancing okay. years. I remember the article was a great article. That's why I remember well, it's it. It's probably still running around the internet. You can never lose anything anymore. It's, it's probably stuff true. just lives forever. One of the things I remember very clearly, though, is 1 Corinthians 15, you quoted, <clears throat> very important um, place where Paul's talking about the resurrection. And he says, if Christ is not raised, you are, uh, your, your faith is futile, you're still in your sins, and we of all people are most to be pitied. If the resurrection is just a, uh, a nice story, uh, we're, we're lost. We're lost because the resurrection really had to happen. And then Paul goes on to explain that there were eyewitnesses, and this is absolutely verifiable historical truth. Yeah, some people want to treat it like... Um if that's your lucky rabbit's foot, if that's the thing to get you, you through the day, that, makes you feel yeah, good. Yeah, go ahead and do it. But you know, if I, I don't want to be believing something that's untrue. So, right. uh, the the thing that that um, opened this up for me was I was reading through the McChain Bible Reading Plan that you know takes you through the Bible in Absolutely. a year. Absolutely. And while we were on vacation one year long ago, um, I got to Matthew twenty eight, which is the resurrection and the mm -hmm. women going to the tomb. Yeah. And I've, that's such a familiar passage. I've read it how many times and thought, well, I'm not going to see anything near here that I haven't seen before. And I was going to read it really quickly and, you know, get yeah, da da da, got it done. But then I did see something new. I mean, you can read a passage in the Bible uh, how many times, and God will always so, show you something new that you said, how did I ever miss that? Yeah, that, that, is, that, that is one of the reasons why, because it's a divine book, because God speaks to us not only in it, but sort of through it. Uh, you really can't read the Bible too often. You can never say, oh, I read that chapter, I can skip it. Yeah. Never. And so you went back, you read it again, and what was it you saw new? Well, it's the part where it's talking about the women are going out to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body because, of course, he was buried very hastily right. after the crucifixion, and they didn't think that all of the rites had been um, yes. done properly. And they were, in Mark um, 16, it tells us that they were actually worried about how they were going to get into the tomb because of that huge rock that was right. like down in the declivity, which would have been a problem not just for women, but men. I mean, anyway. it's not meant to be moved. So they were discussing that. And going back to Matthew 28, it says when they got there, the stone was rolled away and there was an angel sitting on top of it. And, you know, I looked at that and I said, okay, Jesus didn't need the angel to let him out of the tomb. It's not like he's like, knock, 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 you know, could you let me why, out, please? Why didn't he need Well, he was the creator. He was, he was... <laughs> He was in charge of every molecule of the universe, from all those gorgeous images that the Webb telescope shows us mm -hmm. to feeding of the, well, 5,000. Some commentators think it was more like 20,000 if you count the women and the children, because it was said it was only the men. Right, and also the risen Christ appeared to his disciples through locked doors. Right, with his resurrection so body, he, he could have gone through. He really didn't need the angel he to move He did not need the angel to move it. In fact, he was gone by the time the angel got there. He was on his way to Galilee, is what the angel says. He was already... Elvis had left the building, you know, he was, he had already, oh, so he was he, already gone. And the angel was there to say, go in and look. And what did they see when they went in and looked? They saw the grave clothes, which would have been 
you know, wound around the body, John, mummy the style. The Gospel of John talks about that. But they weren't disturbed. They weren't like ripped off or anything right. like that. They were just all still wound up very neatly. And he had passed through those. And then he'd passed through the rock, et cetera. And then they went and told the disciples. And the disciples came and looked, and they saw the same thing. It says right. that Peter saw the grave clothes, uh, et cetera. So the stone was rolled away not to let Jesus out. Right. But? To let us in, to trust but verify that the resurrection had actually taken place because it took mm -hmm. place in time and in space mm -hmm. and in history. And to, to take a slogan that I've heard used in other situations that I may not agree with, history is on our side. You can ask any question you like of Christianity and I'll help you look for the answer. I'll help you ask the question because it can stand up to that. It, it has to be factual. It, it has can. to be. It can. By the way, two really, really important books to show this I knew there would be one. Well, N.T. Wright's book, The Resurrection of the Son of God. Which is a real doorstopper. It is. It is. And another one that's similar is Richard Baucom, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses. Yep. That one. But the main point, I think, that we need to make sure we, everybody sees is that other religions, in other religions, you're saved by following the teachings of the founder. Yeah, like the Buddha or Muhammad. Yeah, no, whoever the founder is, the most important thing that that uh, founder did was teach how do you behave so that you can be saved. Right. And therefore, um, the teaching is the key thing. But we do not believe you're saved by your good works or by anything you do. We're saved, we understand the Gospels, we're saved by what Jesus did. Did. What he right. did. Did. Not what Historical we do. Historical fact, provable, Which verifiable. means, it's, it's Jesus, though, was a great teacher. He was more than a teacher, he was a savior. And it wasn't just that we need to listen to what Jesus says, which we do, but we have to trust in what he did. And therefore, unless the cross really happened, unless the uh, resurrection really happened, then we are still lost. We're still in our sins, as it were. And it all started with an angel politely rolling the stone away and inviting us to come in and verify that it had actually happened. You're right.